Hey team, and welcome back to another video in our Astrological Magical Elections video series. Today we're going to talk about those magical electional opportunities that we're going to have available to us between our Sagittarius full moon on June 4th and our Gemini new moon on June 17th. So this time I have four elections to share with you, which is a pretty good number. I know last time we had so many elections that the video itself took like an hour. I was so tired after recording it. So I'm happy to have a little bit less to share with you. And four is a pretty good number when it comes to waning moon phases. In the waning moon, we're more focused on, you know, giving, getting rid of things, diminishing, letting go of things. And so they're not as fun of a time to be performing astrological magic or making talismans. They're just not as fun. You know, it's not everybody wants to make the, 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 the waxing moon is where we get to have our fun and, you know, find things to gain and grow and augment. In the waning moon, we kind of have to decide to let go of things, which is, you know, the less fun part of life, but it is often necessary. So it's good to have kind of the right celestial kind of forces pushing us the right way to help us do those things that can be difficult or unpleasant. So we have four elections to talk about today. Um, three of them are going to be available everywhere. And then there's one that uh, Western Europe and Northern Africa are going to miss out on, unfortunately. So our first selection that we're going to talk about is going to be for opportunities for the 22nd Lunar Mansion. And the 22nd Lunar Mansion is a really a fun one. It's uh, one of the more positive, I think, uh, mansions that are associated more with the waning moon and that it is a lot of times you have mansions that are kind of very firmly in one camp. Like uh, you'll have mansions whose powers um, and abilities are much more obviously associated with the waxing moon phase, like the third lunar mansion or the seventh mansions that are about like gaining and growth, like the 25th, the 24th. Um, like they're more obviously associated with the waxing moon. And then you have, you know, on the other hand, mansions that are obviously much more associated with the waning moon, like the fourth or the 21st or the 14th. Um, but then you have some, um, like the 22nd, which can really easily adapt to either. It's just, just really depending on like how exactly you as a practitioner want to kind of approach it. Um, and so the 22nd Lunar Mansion is, is neat like that, which makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of like mercurial Im imagery uh, associated with the 22nd Mansion, which makes it, you know, fun for that. But the 22nd Mansion is about escape. Um, and it's about like escape and freedom. These are kind of its main core. So I tend to think of it more as like freedom inducing when it's um, waxing and more like escapist when it's waning. So the 22nd Mansion in a waning moon is going to be a talisman that is more to help people get out of situations, more to help people move on from things. Um, especially if it's something that they feel like stuck in right now, like a situation they're stuck in. Uh, maybe that's a job that they don't like or a relationship that's not going anywhere or stuck in like unemployment, but it can also be used for other things like um, escape from pain and illness. There's like healing. Uh, there's some healing, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, the 22nd Lunar Mansion is also associated with healing to some extent, so there's there's that part in it as well. And there's just a, a lot that the 22nd Mansion can do as long as we can kind of get the election to work with us. So for North America, the 22nd Lunar Mansion talisman is going to take place on June 5th at around 2.32 in the morning. And this is one that's going to be really tight. Um, so individuals in the Eastern time zone may not be able to do this one. You may need to wait until the moon gets to the Ascendant to try that. Um, but as you can see, the 22nd Lunar Mansion starts at 0 degrees Capricorn and 0 degrees minutes, 0 degrees minutes, and 0 minutes. Uh, and you can see that's exactly where the moon is. So, like, the moon has just <laughs> moved into the, it has literally just, she's, like, in the door of the hotel here. Um, and so, more eastern, getting the moon on the midheaven might still be in late Sagittarius. You might have to wait just till the moon comes back around here. Um, but anyway, for those of us in the central time zones and further west... Uh, you'll have the moon in the 22nd mansion on the midheaven. And here she'll be applying a trine to Jupiter and Taurus, which I thought was a really nice touch. Um, Jupiter is a planet of you know stability, of peace, um, of giving. And I thought it could be very helpful, uh, especially for people who are looking to like move. Obviously, you want to like escape one thing to go to something better. And I thought Jupiter uh, as like the greater benefic would be a good would be in a good spot to be able to do that. Um, now, the moon is unafflicted by Mars or Saturn. Um, and we can talk a bit about the Ascendant. So here at this time, the Ascendant is at like in the last degree of Pisces, like just barely hanging on to Pisces here with like five minutes left. Um, and you can use the, the Pisces Ascendant, I think, to get Jupiter as the ruler of the first house in Taurus. I think that's fine. Um, the alternative would be, um, you know, you could wait a little bit and you would get Aries on the Ascendant, 
which would make Mars the ruler of um, the first house. And you know, now that I said that, I think I like that better. So let me kind of update this a tiny bit. Um, because yeah, here we go. So with Aries on the ascendant, I like this better now that I think about it. Because when we had Jupiter, let me change my colors here. When we had Jupiter, when we had Pisces on the ascendant with Jupiter as the ruler of the first house, um, then Jupiter was in a square aspect with this Mars, which isn't good. Um, even if the aspect is separating, it's within five degrees. So we're gonna kind of we're gonna kind of kick that back because the opposite is that you have Mars as the ruler of the first house, who is in a square aspect with Jupiter. And this is kind of one of the things when it comes to like planetary aspects that I think people kind of forget or maybe don't really pay that much attention to, is that you know an aspect is relationship between two planets and different participants in a relationship can have different experiences in that relationship and i think that's important so between a square with mars and jupiter one of those planets is having a harder time <laughs> with the other than you know the other planet is so like between mars and jupiter like a square between these planets who's getting the short end of the stick well jupiter's getting the short end of the stick because it's being squared by mars um, but mars who's being squared by jupiter isn't really you know um, hurting for that relationship so you can always kind of you know uh, shoes on the other foot kind of a situation on these but yeah the Aries ascendant would be preferable uh, which is only like a minute or two later this is like 233 now uh, up from 232 um, but the Mars is the the Aries ascendant is probably gonna be better situated here than about it's gonna be the better situation here um, as opposed to this to the Jupiter one the Western Europe Northern African version of this chart is going to take place on June 5th at around 1616 um, and the chart's going to look a little bit different uh, from the North American version. Here we're going to have the moon um, in the 22nd Lunar Mansion, I forgot what mansion we were in, in the 22nd Lunar Mansion in the third house, her house of joy, um, and she's still going to be applying this trine very closely to Jupiter who kind of like is central to this um, because after the square to Jupiter the moon moves on to like a sextile of Saturn which while not like debilitating, you know, it's not like a square or anything difficult. It's not the best. Saturn's not exactly the planet that I think about when I think of like freedom and escape, you know, like uh, not a, not quite, not quite on brand for Saturn there. Um, so we want to maintain this trend with Jupiter. So here now we have Venus as the ruler of the first house and Venus is doing okay. Um, this conjunction with Mars might have a lot of people concerned. I wouldn't worry about it so much. Uh, right now, nine degrees is pretty far apart. Uh, Venus is going to hit the square of Jupiter first, which isn't a big deal. Um, and this conjunction between Mars and Venus never actually perfects. Venus will retrograde before that. Like Mars goes into Virgo, and then Venus retrogrades in like the last degree of Leo backwards. So this conjunction will never perfect. I don't think we'll really see any big, um, you know, any any negatives from this conjunction really. Uh, so I wouldn't super worry about it so much in talismanic creations. And then finally, uh, the um, Australian version of this chart is going to take place on June 5th at 18.06, so just after 6 p.m. Um, and here we're going to have the moon in the 22nd Lunar Mansion on the Ascendant, still applying that trine to Jupiter here in Taurus. Um, and initially I had this chart as like an either or, either the late Sagittarius rising or the early Capricorn rising, kind of the same way that we had the late Pisces or early Aries um, options for North America. But of course my uh, advice now has been amended to match the North American advice, which is that you should go for the non-Jupiter option. So here we would prefer Saturn um, in, in, we would prefer Saturn in Pisces um, rather than Jupiter in Taurus because Jupiter in Taurus has to deal with the square to Mars, which is not super fun, um, while Saturn in Pisces has to deal with the sextile um, to Jupiter that I kind of overshot there, the sextile to Jupiter, there we go, um, which is a much more uplifting and helpful aspect than uh, than the one that Jupiter is currently experiencing with Mars. So that's a much better, a much better, uh, a much better place to be. The ascendant and the moon are unafflicted. Excuse me, Saturn as the ruler of the first house is unafflicted, currently being uplifted by this nice sextile from uh, from Jupiter. Um, and so just all in all, uh, some good options for the 22nd Lunar Mansion. Our second electional opportunity is going to be for a Vega fixed star talisman. Uh, Vega is a really cool fixed star located in the Lyra constellation. Um, and Vega is associated with spiritual protection and healing exorcisms, getting rid of negative energies and dealing with nightmares. Um, it's very useful for like uh, cleansing. Um, for purification rituals uh, and helpful for people who struggle like with nightmares or like sleep terrors um, or um, 
um, sleep paralysis, I couldn't think of what it was called, um, very useful for those situations and just generally being very useful for kind of keeping negative things away. So Vega is just a really handy star to have that goes, that works very well with any sort of spiritual practice, especially if you focus more on like cleansings and consecrations and things like that. Vega is a very helpful, very helpful tool to have um, to, to, to work with those. Um, the North American version for the Vega election takes place on June 5th at 2238. And here we have uh, Vega rising over the Ascendant at 15 degrees Capricorn with the moon applying the conjunction um, to Vega and then um, applying a trine aspect to Mercury in Taurus. Now, Vega is a star that's of the nature of Venus and Mercury. So we would want the moon to apply to one of those two planets, either Venus or Mercury. And here we have the application to Mercury. It's a little far out, about 10 degrees. Um, but we still do have the moon going to that connection, which is very helpful and helps us to cement that at the same time. We want to make sure that the moon and the ruler of the first house aren't afflicted, the ascendant degree as well. Um, so both the moon and the ascendant are fine from the, you know, from the difficult aspects of you know, the sun or Mars or Saturn. And Saturn is the ruler of the first house, um, who is also unafflicted by Mars or combust the sun. Saturn's not retrograde, things like that. The only thing Saturn has going on is this uh, like sextile aspect to Jupiter. So all in all, just a really solid, really nice Vega election. Uh, and I recommend, oh, Vega is a star that I recommend to a lot of people. Um, it's a really nice star um, to kind of help ease people into fixed star practices. There's some that are a little bit more difficult to get a handle on that I wouldn't necessarily recommend to beginners, um, but Vega is a good, it's a good starting point. So the Australian version of the Vega chart is gonna look exactly the same as the North American version. Um, it's set for June 6th at 1915 and kind of follows those same steps. Uh, the fixed star Vega rises over the ascendant at 15 degrees of Capricorn. Uh, the moon is conjoined the fixed star. Uh, the moon is applying the sextile, I'm sorry, the trine to Mercury. Um, the moon is unafflicted by Mars or Saturn or the sun. Saturn is the ruler of the first house and is unafflicted by Mars or Saturn. Excuse me. Um, Saturn just having to use, just has the sextile with, with Jupiter to worry about. Um, which is nothing to worry about at all because sex also benefits are good. Um, so yeah, another just really great, a really great Vega election. Very, very nice to have it. I feel like we've been in a little bit of like a fixed star drought lately. Um, and so now it's nice to kind of see, especially one like Vega, which can be very useful for people, really help them turn things around if they're having trouble with like sleeping and getting a lot of sleep because of like anxiety or things like that. Very, very helpful. Um, so yeah, make sure to make sure to grab it while you can. Western Europe, North Africa don't have a Vega election opportunity. We can talk about why. Um, so one of the big things for fixed star talismans is that you need to have the uh, the degree of the star on the ascendant or the midheaven and the moon close enough applying to that to not be cadent. And that's usually where you run into problems because the moon misses. Um, so like, let's go ahead and pull this forward here. Um, so 15 degrees Capricorn on the ascendant, that's Vega's degree. The moon's at eight degrees in 45 minutes. That's too cadent. I like to keep it within five degrees. So if the moon was like 10 degrees, um, or more, like between 10 and 15 degrees, perfect. Eight degrees is too far. That's a cadent moon. I don't want it. Uh, we can go to the midheaven if we wanted, and we can pull this. Okay, so the midheaven's at 15 degrees. Um, midheaven's at 15 degrees. The moon is at 11 degrees. So this could this could potentially work, and then you kind of start filling in everything else. Um, you know, you would have Venus or the moon, or wait a second, would you? Yeah, you'd still have the moon applying to Mercury, which we want. Uh, the problem is though, that now we've got um, the Mars square with the ascendant, which I don't want. Um, so that's why there's not a Vega election. And this isn't really negotiable because you have to keep 15 degrees on the midheaven. Um, so like you're gonna, you're just gonna be stuck with four degrees on the ascendant, basically four or five degrees, which is gonna put you within that square at, uh, aspect with Mars. So, I mean, I guess if you don't care about the square aspect with Mars, which you probably should care, um, then June 6th at 4 in the morning, Western Europe, North Africa. Don't do it, though. Or if you do say it, don't tell them I told you to do it, because I didn't. Our third electional opportunity is going to be for the second lunar mansion. And the second lunar mansion is a little bit of a weird one sometimes. Um, it primarily is associated with, like, authority figures and our relationship with authority figures, making them like you, making them be kinder to you. Um, you know, having them forgive you is kind of like, it's the traditional text, like the Picatrix, it says it's for like removal of anger, uh, like of authorities. Um, so it's like making authorities nice to you, which is something that can be used a lot. I would m make that more in like a waxing moon phase, I think. Um, and like, especially when it comes to dealing with like judges, police, things like that, the secular mansion is very helpful for bosses and like supervisors and, and you know, people kind of within that, 
uh, avenue as well, but mostly I think of it as like people who have like executive authority over you. And that's more something we're gonna see more in like the justice system. It can also be used for like promotions, but that's again something that I would only do during the waxing moon. Don't do not do that during the waning moon. You're more likely to lose the job or like have that position closed, unfulfilled. Ask me how I know. Um, but when we're talking about it within a waning moon period, um, we're thinking more of it. I really enjoy the idea of like the second lunar mansion is like removal of anger. Um, which is like its main function that the Bigatrix talks about in book four. I think this makes the second lunar mansion something of like an unexpected therapy talisman to where this mansion helps us kind of work through feelings of anger, rage, and regret, um, helps us to better contextualize them and cope and deal and, you know, have them have them not be so much of a problem or a hurdle, help to kind of untangle some of these knots that we put ourselves in, helping us to find paths for forgiveness, um, you know, not only for other people, helping to forgive people, but also to like forgive ourselves or, you know, forgive other people for ourselves just so it's not something we're like hung up on or, you know, carrying with us. The second lunar mansion is like, it's a really interesting one and one that I don't think gets a lot of attention because it has a little bit more of like internal workings, but these are like internal changes that can actually be very helpful for a lot of people. So I like to, I like to spotlight it whenever we have opportunities for it. But taking a look at our election, uh, the North American version of the second lunar mansion talisman um, takes place on June 12th at 838 in the morning. Um, and here we're going to have the moon on the midheaven in the second lunar mansion. And she is going to be applying a sextile to the sun. Obviously, I really enjoy sun moon sextiles. That's sort of like my thing or sun moon aspects in a lot of different lunar mansions. They tend to be very helpful. Um, that's sort of one of my things. But I especially like it because this, like, when it comes to something like the second lunar mansion, the sun is very helpful for like helping us gain clarity, perspective, and understanding, um, which can be helpful in you know dealing with some of the issues that we might turn to the second lunar mansion for, helping us understand like why we feel like angry or disconnected from things, you know, kind of helping us get more to the root of that and solve it from there rather than from like a symptom uh, or like a surface level approach that I think can, can be helpful. Uh, the moon is going to rule the first house here, uh, and she's unafflicted by Mars or Saturn. One thing that I wanted to be very careful of is I wanted to make sure that the that Mars was like conjoined the second house cusp or pulled into the second house in some way. So I use like the five degree rule. Planets that are five degrees in front of a house cusp get pulled into it. If you don't normally use that and you see this as a first house Mars, change the ascendant. Whoa, I hit my monitor and started shaking. Um, change the ascendant to be earlier or whatever you need to do to get Mars more fully in what you would consider the second house because having Mars a planet that represents anger and rage um, and you know potentially unhealthy ways to deal with it in the first house in a talisman that's about like overcoming anger probably isn't super helpful but I did really enjoy kind of this imagery of the moon separating this trine with Mars and then applying the sextile with the sun. It's like you you get angry and then you reflect on what made you angry. Just a really neat kind of astrological, I don't know, symbol there of how of how this talisman could could potentially work. The second lunar mansion election for North I'm sorry, for Western Europe and Northern Africa is going to take place on June 12th at 2321. Um, and here we're going to have a little bit different because we're going to have the moon in the second mansion in the third house here. Um, she is going to still be applying that sextile to the sun, which I think is very helpful for that sort of like introspective, uh, get that, that introspective look that the, that the second lunar mansion can help us accomplish when it comes to dealing with anger and other negative emotions and their sources and what we can do to, to, to better cope with them and handle them. Um, the ruler of the first house is going to be Saturn and Pisces here. Whoa, I just drew a line right through it. It's going to be Saturn and Pisces here. I'm still experiencing this nice sextile with Jupiter that I like. But the moon is unafflicted by Mars, which would be the big thing here. Um, since we're a talisman that's about dealing with anger, we want to make sure that Mars is, you know, handled. Um, the moon's unafflicted by Mars or Saturn. Um, Saturn is also unafflicted by Mars. The ascendant is doing fine, unafflicted by Mars or Saturn. Just, an, just a solid, you know, checks all of our boxes for what we're looking for for a lunar mansion talisman with the second here. And then finally, our Australian version of the second lunar mansion is going to take place on June 13th at 2.12 in the morning. Um, the moon on the ascendant in the second lunar mansion. Um, here still applying that sextile to the sun. Helpful for getting that kind of clarity and insight into some of the internal workings that the second lunar mansion can help us address. Still, of course, separating that trine from Mars to go to the sextile of the sun, which I really think is cute. Um, the ruler of the first house is that Mars, uh, which I think is, uh, you know, kind of an interesting twist. Um, uh, an interesting twist on it. Um, and Mars is doing fine, unafflicted by Saturn, not conjoined the sun or anything like that. 
uh, maybe being boosted somewhat by this uh, by this conjunction with Venus, even though that aspect's not going to perfect. Um, but all in all, uh, the the Moon and the Ascendant are unharmed by a, by a malefic planet, um, and we still kind of keep that that Sun aspect to help us get some insight and help us find better ways forward when we when we want to help better channel our anger. So our next and our final election that we're going to talk about is going to be for the fourth lunar mansion. And the fourth lunar mansion is a fun one because we get to do all those things that we normally avoid. We get to, you know, give the moon a hard time. We get to make malefics angular. We get to do whatever. We get to just go crazy. We get to go nuts. Um, and that's because the fourth lunar mansion is a is a mansion that is more specifically utilized for pest control. It's for eliminating pests from an area. Um, and so it's really helpful, you know, to kind of clear space out, make things to help drive off pests. But what we're basically doing when we're making these, when we're making fourth lunar mansion talismans for pest control is we're making like very targeted curse talismans. We're making talismans that ha that contain difficult or negative or you know, like unfortunate planetary energy to kind of create chaos for a particular thing. In this case, whatever pest is that we're trying to deal with. So they can be a little bit more fun, the fourth lunar mansion talismans because we kind of get to let our hair down, go crazy, and just kind of like mess things up a little bit. And that's what we get to do with this election. We get to do some things that we would never do. And I'm going to use red ink for this because it's, that seems appropriate. So the so at this time, we have the moon on the midheaven in the fourth lunar mansion, and she is applying a square to Mars. You see what I mean? We get to do crazy things, just like crazy stuff. Um, and of course, Mars, this Mars square is a good application for a pest control talisman because we want to bring kind of that Marsness to it. Like, go away. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here kind of energy, especially because here is probably where you think your home is. Um, so whatever, whatever infestation, whatever pest that you're dealing with that you kind of want to, you know, get rid of in a, in a bit more of like a non, you know, in, in a more humane method, magic can be a good opportunity because they can kind of ward them away without having to like go to anything a bit more uh, harsh. Um, Mars is uh, conjoined the Ascendant in this chart, which is fine because the Ascendant is going to represent the pest that we're, that we're dealing with. Um, and then the pest itself is going to be ruled by the sun as the as the ruler of the first house in this talisman. And the only thing that I don't like about this chart is that I wish the sun were a little bit more messed up. The sun is just like in Gemini in the eleventh house, like what do you do? Nothing really to, to write about then. But like if the sun had been square Saturn, that would be pretty cool. Um, but the Mars, the moon applying to Mars, and then Mars in the first house ought to be enough to make a to make the situation uncomfortable. Um, there's obviously a lot of heat in this chart, so um, this talisman would probably be very useful for more cold-oriented um, pests. So things more like beetles, uh, mice, rats, um, snakes, those kinds of things. Um, and it's probably not going to be very helpful for more hot-oriented pests, wasps, ants, those kinds of things. So for those, we would want like a more Saturn influence because the coldness of Saturn will counter kind of the, the hotness of those particular pest types. But for this Mars one, we still have a good number of, uh, of pests that, that Mars can help address with its uh, increased heat. For the North American, I'm sorry, for the Western Europe and Northern African version of the fourth lunar mansion, um, we're going to keep the moon in that fourth mansion here now conjoined the ascendant. We want to make sure that Jupiter is far away from the ascendant. We don't want Jupiter's stabilizing powers to be here. We want it gone. You can, like you see the crazy things coming out of my mouth. Um, the moon in this instance is besieged technically, which is an, uh, which is which is good. <laughs> so the moon has separated from the square of Mars and is now kind of void. is is now pretty you know pretty pretty empty in her course and is going to be applying the square to um, to Saturn. I know that because of the numbers right now it looks like v it looks like the moon is going to hit Mercury first because six degrees Gemini is four seven degrees Pisces, um, but Mercury is moving so Mercury is going to keep moving. Um, and will be like at nine degrees Gemini by the time the moon gets to the square of Saturn here. So it'll be the moon will hit Saturn first. So the moon is technically besieged. Um, the ascendant is square Mars exactly, which is why I wanted it for this time. So this is a this is a really good kind of like focused, <laughs> really good like focused messed up moon um, that will really drive you know pests wild. So knock yourself out. This is a this is a generally we would avoid these things, but since we're trying to give some some bugs or mice or whatever it is a bad time, we can we can lean into it more. And then the Australian version is going to be kind of a combination between the Western Europe and the North American version. Here we're going to have the moon on the midheaven in the fourth lunar mansion. 
um, we're going to have the moon applying the square to Saturn. Well, if I can draw a line, we could. We're going to have the moon applying a square to Saturn. Um, the moon is going to rule the first house, so we're going to make sure that the moon is uh, as messed up as we possibly can, which is what we're, which is what we're doing. We're going to have Mars in the first house, which is helpful uh, for this. Yeah, this this Venus Mars conjunction kind of balances each other out, unfortunately. But you know, if we're gonna, we don't necessarily want a benefic in the first house because it kind of supports the it supports the pests. We don't want that. So I mean, we need to make sure that we have a malefic somewhere involved to help counter it as much as we can. Mars's position here helps to do that. Um, and the moon is also besieged here uh, as well, just like she was in the North uh, in the North African and Western Europe version. The moon is separating the square of Mars and kind of going void for a bit and before hitting that square of Saturn. So we have that, that nice besiegement between these two malefics with the moon kind of taking a break between that. Um, and again, just another another nice kind of afflicted moon. We got that besiegement. The ruler of the ascendant gets to be a little bit more uh, afflicted in these in this chart than it was in the previous charts, um, because the moon gets to pull double duty there. And so, just a really nice, you know, really. I don't know what kind of cold pests y'all have in Australia. Everything seems pretty hot over there. Um, scorpions. That's good. Scorpions and spiders. I, don't, I guess those are things you guys deal with. Um, that's what I believe as an American who's never been to Australia. It's just that Australians are like constantly like fighting the good fight against like giant bugs and scorpions. That's just what I believe. I'm not, I'll never change that. Um, but this should, this should help you in your war against the, the arthropods. <laughs> But all right, everybody, those were all the elections that I had to share with you guys today. You know, a good number of elections to, to work with in a waning moon phase. Um, hopefully there's something here that you can find some use for in these next couple weeks. So thank you so much for your time and for watching. A special thanks to all my patrons. And if you're interested in supporting the channel and the cats that apparently aren't going to show up, uh, make sure to check out the Patreon for all the fun bonuses that that membership includes. But thank you so much, and I will see you again on our uh, Gemini New Moon.